Our discussion is very simple. It starts from very five very basic premises. No? Number one, climate change, the world, um, warming temperatures, it's happening. It's been warming for a long while. Climate science is not something new that came up in the last decade. Many people have pointed to a problem that um, very early said we're going to have a crisis soon unless we wake up and change the way that our economies are run, the way that we live as societies. Number two, why is it warming? Why is there climate change? It's because of us. It's a scientific world. We call it anthropogenic influence, influence of humans. No? It's a very important term. Whether you're in education you know, or the arts or sciences, um, our impact on our surroundings, on our classmates, on our families, on our environment, is always going to be important. Whether these impacts will be negative or positive, you know, it's always really up to us. Are we sure that it's really anthropogenically related? Talaga bang may kinalaman sa mga tao yan? Yes. Climate science is saying yes. 97% at least of the scientific community worldwide all state that climate change is real. It's because of human interference with the planet's climate system. And it's going to get worse until and unless governments act very soon. Governments don't act on their own. Citizens tell governments what they need to do. If you don't get involved, nothing pretty much happens. Yeah? Is it bad? It's really bad. And it's not just bad, it's going to get worse. Can we fix it? Yes. But we have very little time. And that's why there's a big question mark. The question is not whether we can fix it, it's whether we can fix it in time and whether we can do enough to ensure that in the next few decades, over the next few decades, we will still be strong enough to remake the societies that we're in. Probably one of the more important points, um, which is strange to say in a setting that's uh, in an academic uh, uh, institution, is that specialization is very important. That's what you're all trained to do. But my message also to you is that it is also not very important. In fact, it is important, but it is not enough. And if you think too much and dive too much into specialization, you're going to disable your ability to be better citizens and to be better at whatever you do. I'm just saying specialization is very important, but it's only as important as you see the other fields and as you see the other disciplines and the way you deliberately try to integrate other disciplines into your work. And whatever that governments today do and citizens act on will result not in a better future for them, but in a future that may be better for their children. This is because all the impacts that we see today, that we have felt today, are impacts that are a result of emissions decades ago. It means solutions that we push for in terms of energy or infrastructure, or transport, or forests that are established tomorrow. It will be felt only in 20 years or 30 years. It means you are fighting not necessarily for your future only. It's a future that is related more to your kids or the ones that will come after you. Why is the climate crisis happening? Um, there are several ways of uh, explaining. You know? uh, in the image that you see in front of you, you know, that's one way of looking at it. The sun enters radiation from the sun, you know, solar radiation, enters um, our planetary system. But because there's too much greenhouse gases, you know, it is unable to go out and dissipate. The more greenhouse gases that are emitted, the less able that we can dissipate the radiation that comes in from the sun. You can think of it in another way. What is the difference between climate and weather? Yeah? Weather is the totality of all atmospheric phenomena. Climate is average weather. 
what we're doing is we're changing average weather. And if you consider the fact that entire economies around the world depend on average weather because they depend on seasons. We know when it's dry season or autumn or spring or winter or rainy season. If we're changing average weather, we're putting at risk entire economies that rely on predictability. And that's why climate change is dangerous because we are creating the possibility of incremental or large-scale collapse uh, in the way that economies are run around the world. Think of it in another way as well. Venus has too much greenhouse cover. That's why too, it's too hot. Nothing lives in Venus. Mars has too little. That's why it's too cold. Earth is optimal, is an optimal setting, has enough heat, enough of the setting that allows life to flourish. But we're messing around with the settings. That's what climate change is in a nutshell. And the effects are not entirely pleasant. What are the problems? This um, graph, it's called the hockey stick graph. You will see that from this point to here, it's almost like a uh, level, but then it goes straight up like a hockey stick. This is time, 200,000 AD, 1200, and current times here. This is the record of temperature increases over time from different studies. This hockey stick graph is, was made by a scientist called Michael Mann in 1998. The reason why I'm showing this and the other graphs that will follow is to demonstrate how real and how serious the impact of humans are on the Earth's climate. This is in 1998. This hockey stick has become more acute because the end here has just continued to rise up. So from 200 to 1,000 to the year 2000s, temperature has just simply gone up. Unfortunately, it corresponds also with the CO2 emissions, carbon dioxide emissions that have been recorded along with other gases, but right now CO2 is the most important for our discussion. This is a graph that shows the readings from several ice core samples. And again, it shows from CO2 measurements over time from the Taylor Dome ice core, Low Dome ice core, and the Mauna Loa observatory readings. Again, Pagdating Industrial Period, recordings went up, almost alongside uh, temperature readings. Again, another graph that shows similar things, but measuring parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. And this is a recording made in 2015, 437.37 parts per million. Ito yung period kung saan lumabas yung humans, homo sapiens, around here. And this is where we are today. Most recent, April 2, 2018. And the recording is very similar. And we're now at 409.43 ppm. Scientific, um, common scientific understanding is that the safe level is at 350 ppm. In April 2, the recording was at 409. The challenge is how to bring this back to a safe level, and right now the challenge is not to allow it to go any higher. How dangerous is it? Um, it's pretty dangerous, it's pretty bad. Um, for many communities, it's catastrophic. This graph shows the total global sea ice area. Measurements you know, dating from 1978 up to 2016 recent headline that shows 
the melting in the Greenland glaciers, the extent has been unprecedented compared to the last four centuries, the last 400 years, consistent with the graph that I earlier sent, showed you. Glaciers are retreating. And in areas that rely on glaciers or fresh water, this is particularly frightening. Hundreds of millions of people in South Asia rely on the glaciers for their freshwater needs. As the glaciers retreat, so will their freshwater provisions dry up. And if those provisions dry up, they will move and find other sources, if they can find any, which means potentially triggering more conflicts in South Asia, which is India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, you know, you name it. Antarctic ice shelves. Ang measurement nila, this one, talks about melting that's happening below. That's not visible, but is rapidly melting below, which means that it is also increasing the warming of seas around it as water melts and increases the temperature of seas around the glaciers. And it increases, as a consequence, sea levels. Sea levels are rising because of climate change for two reasons. One, because glaciers are not ice that float on water, but sit on masses of land. And once they, once they melt, they add to the volume of water that they merge with. The second, probably even more important reason, at risk are, in the next two decades, millions, hundreds of millions of people who live in coastal cities, such as Manila, such as those in Miami and other places. In the next two decades, what you see is the coast will probably be part of the sea. And although there are a lot of climate change impacts that can be reversed, are irreversible, sea, level ri sea levels rising is something that you cannot reverse because it will take millennia before they go back to normal and return to their previous levels. Islands will disappear. And island nation states like the Marshall Islands or Fiji are at risk not simply of being flooded, but of being obliterated entirely. Because if your island nation goes underwater, your culture disappears as well. This is also what happens. No? This is most recent in the US. Rapid Arctic warming is creating havoc in other weather systems climatic systems elsewhere, resulting in more extreme winter conditions, more extreme cold, freezing, blizzards elsewhere, as the Arctic warms rapidly. So Arctic warming creating more intense blizzards, warming seas creating more intense typhoons. Yolanda was not necessarily because of climate change. But the intensity increased because warm seas serve as fuel for storms, adding to the wind speed and intensity of the typhoon. Okay? You have to distinguish between natural weather variability and climate change induced impacts. Very bad, particularly for humans, but terrible for other species. This slide I'd like you to delve on because it talks about speed, scale, and timeline, and the inability of many organisms to flee from the climate crisis. There are different scenarios that scientists have projected in terms of how much warming we can allow 
or we will allow, and what the impacts might be. So they call it representative concentration pathways, RCPs. There's one that talks about um, RCPs, that, uh, a pathway that is normal to here, to wh where we are right now. Another that looks at you know, a less than great scenario, another that looks at an even worse scenario, and the other is RCP 8.5, which is a runaway climate change. Last studies that came out show that, on average, studying about 2,000 species, organisms were moving at least one meter uphill to flee warming temperatures. So, maket sila. They've also been measured, on average, to have moved 17 kilometers farther away from the equator, where it's warmest. Tumatakas na sila. At yung iba, hindi matakas. Some cannot move as quickly as others. Some can, but only to the extent that their habitats will allow them. Because they are all searching for the average climate that they had been born into. This is a graph that just shows, this is 1990, this is 2100. Eto tayo so far, this black line. This is the, the temperature, the emissions level. If we don't do anything, if it's business as usual, if no change, no action is taken globally, including on the part of the Philippines, because hindi ito pwede maging problema ng mayamang bansa lang. Ang baseline ng temperature increase would be up to 4.8 degrees above pre-industrial levels. And as I said earlier, 2 degrees is already very dangerous. Okay?